Welcome back to the Northwest Esports Series. We're here with round two of the League of Legends Swiss Bracket. I'm Grapes, joined here by RMC. But really quick, before we get underway with our really exciting matchup, I wanted to shout out a couple of our sponsors here, Alberta Innovates, ESIO, and ATB. Thank you so much. And of course, I want to thank Norquest in addition to them. And RMC, I, I guess it's a little bit kind of obvious. I don't want to say obvious, but Norquest College does venture a lot into the esports scene i mean from rocket league super smash bros all the way to valorant and league of legends their community server is a host to many of these games and more so join the norquest community at the link in the panel that is listed below the stream if you want to check these guys out super awesome community but rmc before we get into this game we want to preview the teams just a little bit do both of these squads, Supernova and Wildcard Black, won their previous matchups? And so, due to the nature of the Swiss format, they're meeting here in round two. And these are some really, really strong teams that we have here. Oh, yeah, Graves. And uh, I know that you're one of the preferred casters for Supernova. So, you're very familiar with this particular team. Both these teams are proving ground teams here who have played in multiple of the tier two tournaments. Uh, but actually, surprisingly, I don't believe they've ever played against each other here, which is a little bit surprising. Yeah. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing how they match up. Supernova traditionally has been a slower team that plays for the late game, but that changed in the EGL, the most recent tournament, they've been playing a faster paced game. They've looked a bit more at the early game and for Wildcard Black, they've been overshadowed by their sister team, Wildcard Red, which are the Triple Crown winners currently, uh, but they are a very solid, stable team. They've individually got a lot of strong mechanics with players, uh, well-known players such as Robbie Bob or Quacker here. And I'm curious to see if their early game prowess, if their individual mechanics, pardon me, will convert to early game prowess and if they can overwhelm Supernova quickly enough. Yeah, and it's really interesting to when we talk about Wildcard Black because RMC has been a while since we've seen this team play. They actually did not make it into the EGL Summer Showdown, the, the tournament that Supernova made the playoffs mm. in. So due to the nature of some of the open qualifiers, they unfortunately had um, missed out, losing out to, I think, Conviction in one of those games to get into the tournament. but. Um, hopefully they've had some time to kind of recuperate, get ready for this tournament and also Unified Grand Prix, which is happening in just a couple of weeks. And that's going to be a really big um, inflection point for both of these squads as they are going to try to find a spot here in Proving Grounds later in the month. So for both of these teams, it's an important matchup that they have here to kind of test their strength and see what they need to improve on moving forward. Yeah, very much so here. And uh, especially, I feel like, because there have been some changes with Wildcard Black's roster. Uh, Cycle coming in as a new AD carry here. I've not seen too much of him uh, playing with the rest of Wildcard Black here, but I have seen him playing in the UPL and looked very good there. The question is, can you come in? Uh, can you sort of replace that? Now, on the side of Supernova here, I just want to confirm uh, whether... Is that Rovex in the AD Wait carry a minute. position? That is... Not something that we've seen before. For those of you who aren't as familiar with Supernova <laughs> Esports as me and RMC are, this team has a six-man roster. Rovex mm. is their quote-unquote five-way sub. Traditionally, we've seen him mostly in the support role, replacing their traditional sport of Papa Chow. But instead, it looks like we're going to be seeing him in the bot lane position. So it's going to be Rovex and Chow down in the bot lane. This is not something that I was expecting, RMC, but with some of the changes to the meta with some of these mages that have risen in popularity not super surprised to see a former mid lane main make their way down bottom yeah we should clarify a couple of things with supernova first they have a six-man roster and on top of that to further confuse us they're not using their actual names so andrew <laughs> foreman is rovex if you hear us use the term True. rovex He's Andrew Foreman. We'll be using that interchangeably. And Prosperous Cat, too, is Papa Chow. So uh, when we talk about Chow or Papa Chow, it's Prosperous Cat. Again, will be used uh, interchangeably here. But yeah, definitely. I mean, Rovex or Andrew Foreman was originally a mid laner uh, when he first started, then flexed into the support role and then became a five-way flex here. We've not seen him play an AD carry. And it is going to be yeah. a traditional AD carry. It is a Felios picked up with Tom Kench. That's, hmm. that's interesting. Seen I mean... Yeah, I mean, yeah. we saw it with the old Tom Kench. This is a bit yeah, of a different, exactly. bit different perspective RMC, I think. Yeah, and it's we've not seen Tom Kench support too much because Devour, that ability that made him such a great support for mobile AD carries where you can just devour your ally, keep them safe in your belly, spit them out back when you're safe, that's no longer a basic skill. 
That's now on your yeah. ultimate. The cooldown is significantly longer here. And Tom Kench does great in a solo lane. Instead, they put the cannon into the solo lane. Tom Kench as a support. And I guess with the Thresh ban, they decided that was going to be the Thresh and Braum both taken away there. It, it was sort of the, the save call to make from that team. Uh, but I, I definitely want to see how it works and if they can win out. Because into the likes of a Leona Ash here... I am a little bit concerned that if the Devourer is not as available here, the poke from that Ash is going to land. You know, if the Leona ever lands a Zenith Blade on the Cephalios, that should be a, a dead 200 years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and a perspective that I often like to consider while we're talking about this new Tom Kench, it's kind of like instead of being that protective support along the lines of a Thresh or a Braum, kind of has turned more into an, a more towards that engaged perspective. Things like Nautilus or Leona are similar to this newly reworked Tom Kench. So it's going to be interesting to see how it works here. Typically, you want to see Aphelios with some more of the protective supports, but now going for some more offensive capability, we'll see if Robex and Chowk have the ability to you know, impact this bottom lane. Yeah, and so just looking at this draft that came through from Supernova as well, uh, they've got Lilia Kennen. Both are sort of team fighting champions. Lilia did get changed, uh, is not... Quite as strong in terms of the team fight, the slow, the, the sleep, but has a lot more agency, a lot more strength. And I personally don't usually like Lilia Jungle, even after the rework where she's got a lot more agency. <laughs> but I will make an exception for Maddie because Maddie yeah, has I mean... proved me wrong way too many times, including a <laughs> uh, a Herald snipe from the Dragon Pit blind that he got oh, yeah. uh, for a tiebreaker, I believe, coming out the group stages of EGL TV. So I think what we're likely going to see coming through from the side of Supernova here is a strong mid lane Lucian uh, for Strompist here. They're going to play through that. Maddie can get a hit fairly quickly and then their top side is going to be strong early. They're waiting for this Aphelios to scale up and become a threat. But for the side here of Wildcard Black, their composition is very physically damaging. The only magic damage that they really have is from this Nidalee in the jungle, and that's going to fall off real quick here. So they're really indexing heavily into the early game. They're neck to Nidalee. There's no Mundo on the other side. This is a kill lane. And yeah. Nidalee Graves, sure, you don't have to stun, but Graves in the mid lane right now, if you go the Eclipse build, has disgusting amounts of burst, and it will do so well into the Lucian as well. True Grit passive going to give you that much more safety. I expect to be highly volatile on this bot lane. We talked about it. Ash Leona. That is one of the OG kill lanes here. If you ever got the, on the Aphelios, there's only one Devourer. You can only protect him once. And if you ever get onto him without having to use that solar flare, you're easily going to be able to convert that to a kill lane. So I expect to see Wildcard Black get off uh, to the races early here. And they have to snowball that lead. If it does end up scaling, that's Supernova's wheelhouse. And they've got the da better damage profile. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a difference in playstyles, as you mentioned. Wildcard Black going for really early game lane priority and also just kind of uh, innovation, I would say, in the draft. They have this Graves in the mid lane, which is not something that we typically have seen. Has been buffed up recently with some of the, the AD buffs that it's gotten in some of the previous patches. So having Robbie Bob on this early game champion that can scale really well is going to be impactful. But once again... The, the main focus is going to be around this Renekton Nidalee here for Quacker and Clam. Can they get kills onto Cozy early? We've seen him play pretty well on that weak side for Supernova, and so he's going to have to do it pretty well here as we're just, you know, taking a look at around Summoner's Rift right now, but you could explore the great city of Edmonton, Alberta, um, which is sponsoring us here in the NorQuest series. Edmonton is definitely... A catalyst here for change. We're not just talking about the kind of change you find in yourself with some of those nickels or quarters. Our dream team will work with you to take your vision of a great vacation and turn it into unforgettable for your delegates. How? With creative solutions, a can-do attitude, and a citywide network of doers and makers eager to roll up their sleeves and get things done. Find out more at exploreedmonton.com. And RMC, I know just like the great uh, city of Edmonton, Summoner's Rift is a beautiful place, and I think we're going to see the, the lanes run a bit bloody here in this early game if things go the way of Wildcard Black. Oh, yeah. I, I, I just don't see it going any other way here. And it's not just Wildcard Black. I mean, Maddie likes to make early moves as well. And the changes to Lilia means that he can be more aggressive. And then Strompus. Strompus is known as a rise one trick in the past here. He has absolutely expanded his pool. But even when he started expanding it, he was playing things like Corky, like Cassiopeia, not early game champions. Now, with the Lucian, this is an early game champion here. And I, I don't think we're going to see Strompus play passively, even into a Graves. I think we're still going to see lots of ganks into this mid lane. And I want to see Clam 
reciprocate. I want to see that action. I want to see that 2v2. Yeah, and for Maddie and Strompus, they're a duo that has played together for a really long time, and they're really comfortable on these two champions, Lilia and Lucian. We've seen it. We've seen them pull it out countless times, including in their first game today. So, um, Clam and Clam and Robbie Bob, they have their work cut out for them, but they're also a duo that has been pretty prevalent. They've played together last split on UPL with one of the AOE teams, one of the many area of effect teams that we have here in North American amateur. But I mean, this, this mid jungle duo also has some synergy and I'm excited to see these teams clash here. And what's probably going to be a very, very close, very, very exciting round two as we just head into Summoner's Rift. Graves, I know you did some math uh, off air about AOE here. How many teams do we have uh, playing today from <laughs> AOE again? All right, uh, my math uh, is not, not the best, but I, I had <laughs> some help with one of my my good old friends, the calculator, and you know, I looked around. So here in the Northwest Esports Series, we have the Contenders Division and the Champions Division. And in th those, there's about 35 combined teams. AOE has, I think, eight of them. And that's about one in four almost. So if you're another team going here into this um, into this tournament, you have a, like about a 15 to 20% chance, I would say, in running into an area of effect squad in, in this tournament. So shout out to the guy at, at AOE there doing their best to get as many teams as possible um, <laughs> jobs here in the Northwest Esports Series as we head on to Summoner's Rift here. Supernova going to be on your blue side, Wildcard going to be on your red side. And right now, not too much early game shenanigans. We did see Yasin go for a back, pick up that sweeper, going to try and deny some vision potentially uh, to start off this early clear. And all the vision right now coming out from the side of Wildcard Black here. They've got the early wards down. They switched over to those sweeper trinkets. And Supernova have to be careful. It looks like they might be thinking about going in. They do spot out this ward, but that also gives full knowledge to Wildcard that they're getting invaded. This is something that we've seen so much with the introduction of Lilia. Oh. With the looming blows, really easy to take these Raptors, but it's a 4v2 Stun. already on Wildcard Black side. Maddie oh is forced to flash away already, and a flash forward from Robbie Bob will secure first blood for the Wildcard Black squad. Yes. Drop is going to have to flash as well. And I don't know if Supernova really wanted to go for that invade after they were under vision very, very clearly. I mean, they did not expect Yasin to be waiting up there with that Leona changing the tides, turning it, and Quacker had to start with that Ruthless Predator, the stun as well, and sure, you got first blood, but what you've kind of done is weight your team very heavily. Robbie Bob has to pop off, because Quacker, who was already going to face a very tough lane as a melee into range, who you can't actually reach, is going to have it even worse now with zero trading power at level one. Yeah, the Cannon did get some recent buffs here. Really excited to see Cozy on this sort of champion. Provides a lot of team fight presence, something that he's been really good at on this Supernova squad. And going up against Quacker, who did get chunked out, as you mentioned earlier, in that early exchange, it's going to be a little bit difficult. But I think, as we said before, this top lane will be pretty volatile with Clam already focused around this top side, clearing out the Krugs here for their third camp. And you're just calling for backup, right? You started that stun. You need to find, you know, some aggressive action here. The the other question now is, how is Quacker going to actually reach Cozy? He did actually grab that slice and dice second here. So they're really trying for this particular gank. Ward spots out Clown. Cozy gunning out there with the lightning rush, but looks like Quacker's Ooh. still going to go for it. There's the stun. No spear going forward. Cozy looking to turn this. Flashes forward, and the shurikens are continuing to rain in. Maddie has coming? just arrived here. Still only level two after going for those red raptors wolves. So not going to have the biggest amounts of damage, but might have enough to potentially look for a dive here on to Quacker. Going to try to force the base out. There's priority in the mid lane as well with Robbie Bob looking for a back. Does have the teleport available though. Do it. If One something more goes awry, the Swirl C lands at the last minute. The final W is not enough and Quacker oh. is going to try his best to stay alive. But the blooming blows from Maddie will secure the kill on the dive. Quacker goes down to Cozy. The literal last second here, Graves. Quacker almost made it up, and now this top lane is not playable. Oh, drop it. Ooh, barely. Great soul lane is, is pretty gross, RMC. It is. It, it definitely is disgusting. And keep in mind, Robbie Bob got first blood, went back, bought, and TP'd back into lane. So he has a double longsword advantage as well. Now, Strompist will also likely have to teleport back into lane here to make sure he doesn't miss out on the CS, but he picked up a tier. The combat power is not there for Strompus on this Lucian, at least not if you're trading 1v1 if you're not getting poked out. Yeah, and we'll see how this matchup in the mid lane kind of transpires. 
Lucian Graves is, I have to admit, not a matchup that I'm all too familiar with in the mid lane, but so far things are looking pretty good for Abu Abu. That probably did benefit though from that item advantage. Gonna have that double longsword um, edge in that mid lane as he goes for another recall. But up on the top side though, Maddie gonna try to make a play here on to Quacker, who does not have flash, does not have TP after that recent play. Oh. Cozy trying to get the storms stacks up, gonna land the stun Do here. It. Oh. Quacker goes in and with that Q, will secure the kill on to Cozy. Now Maddie stuck in a 1v1 with the croc. Stomp is, is on his way, but probably not gonna be too impactful. Oh my Look at the goodness. damage though. Quacker is healing up. He has the fury built up and Stromp is gonna try and make the turn. The swirl seed will get dodged away from, but Stromp is gonna try and go under the bush. Gonna dash in, press the attack, already proc. Final Q will not be enough. They will get dodged away from no, Quacker. Maddie! gonna go for the turn. He gets oh. dodged to Maddie. Triumph proc again and Supernova. This is a wild Quacker. goose chase. They're trying their hardest and finally Stromp is will take him down. But at what cost are MC at what cost down to the bot side? Another play is going forward for Wildcard Black as they look for a dive onto Robex and Chow. Yasin, we're looking forward, looking for the Zenith Plague, and instead walk up and just stun up Robex. The health bars are ticking. So the well. boss is on Clam. Robex goes down. Chow's gonna find one. Pops a thick skin to dodge away from that Q damage. Looking for another, but there's still three members strong here for Wildcard Black. The high health bars are not in a preferred situation, and Maddie has arrived to try and ward off the rest of the Wildcard squad. Instead, we'll just be Wildcard backing off. But that was just, oh my, RMC, what just happened? I don't even know. That was illegal. Whatever happened, job side yeah. was illegal. Oh. Quacker. I, I want to point out that there were three people who tried to kill Quacker there. That was ultimately a, a, a 2v1 in multiple senses of that word there. And Quacker just kept dancing in the bushes. The damage that's coming out of this press the attack Renekton is surprising and it's burst damage it's not just sustained damage right now you saw what he did to cozy you saw he, he just did has one long Maddie. sword yeah that, that's all he <laughs> needed <laughs> it's damage man renekton is broken early and now he's got dominus as well this top side i, I think you play it slow over here cozy just get the poke down you don't look for the kill threat necessarily here if anything I think wildcard black start looking for the kill threat here clams once again up here they brought yasin as well yeah, and with that wave crashing in, no slicing mails from available for Cozy just yet. Will be a bit of a scary spot. Maddie is might oh try to no. face check this bush, and here you go. Here comes the Zenith Blade forward, Electrocute already proc. Maddie forced to flash away. Now Quacker, he's here, has his Dominus available. They're looking for the dive, and Cozy's gonna be the target, but has unlocked the ultimate. Not even gonna get to use it though. He gets stunned up for so long. And now Maddie is the target between oh, no. two turrets. Clam dashing forward, finishes off the kill. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Strompus gets a solo kill somehow. I don't, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even. But RMC, this game is just too crazy, man. <laughs> We're not dead yet, bot side. Oh no, here comes the Abyssal Dive. Psycho is also looking. Dodged away from the Tongue Lash and looks like instead will just be some denial of farm here for Robex. And Chow and Robex down in the spot lane have been doing their best here. They had a big dive that they kind of went even on, honestly. And with the fact that they don't have a traditional marksman down here, it's looking pretty good for them so far. I mean... <laughs> Have a traditional I mean, like, I, I meant like, um, <laughs> in terms of like the player, Rovex not normally okay, known yeah. for his AD carry play. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I was that, a little confused. I, I was like, uh, yeah. Apelius is definitely a traditional. <laughs> I mean, 200 years, five guns. I guess uh, most gunmen don't have five guns. Robbie Bob walk into three. Lilting Lullaby already proc. There's the sleep. Watch out, Eve. That's the Q and Maddie. Oh, gets another arrow. one onto the Graves. Now on the bot side, Arrow lands onto Robex. He's stuck in a 2v1. Can <laughs> the 200 years do it? Not enough. Psycho, with one of the oldest marksmen in the game, will take down one of the newest. <laughs> and there's so much action right now, Graves. And usually high action means poor decision making a lot of times. That's not the case right now. We're seeing really good dive setups coming through. We're seeing a lot of trading. And it's just the, the players are mechanically so good. The dives are not bad dives. The problem is just that the people being dope are playing it so well. The thick skin yeah. coming through from Papa Chow, you know, Quacker just being able to 1v3. Even that mid lane, we didn't see what happened. All we saw was that Strompus barely limped out alive, barely any health right now. And you love to see it because we're not even in the mid game proper yet. The supports Ooh. have only now just unlocked their ultimates. And that means that we should be getting more of this, more action. The only thing lacking is neutral objective control. We are at nine minutes. Herald only just, actually, 
Is it gonna get started? Clap no. walking away. Harold not looking done. They're looking top. Uh, is it juice your objective on the map and his name is Cozy. Doesn't look like Clam's gonna go for the dive. Nice flash away from the cannon. Does have the ultimate still available, but it's just pure domination in this top side here for wildcard black. Clam is gonna go for this two for one special here with the crop and the red buff takes. Sorry, blue buff takes. Maddie's gonna try and do something to try and ward off the rest of the wildcard squad. Drop is here. They know that they're being invaded. The question is, can they even do anything? Oh, no, they can't. Not on the top side of the map. That Not even... Yeah, well, bot side you can. Top side you definitely can't. And look at the CS discrepancy there between the junglers. Clam mm -hmm. is significantly up CS right now. Maddie's just been bullied out of this top side jungle. And Clam now going to finally pick up the first neutral objective of the game, the Herald. They need to get this. They need to look for first hurt really quickly because bot side, Robex and Papa Chow, Andrew Foreman and Prosper's Cat, have just been shredding this turret. Yeah, and it looks like they're gonna try and finish it off here. One plate only remains, and Maddie's here as well, but here comes the arrow, gonna get cleansed away That's... from it. Another dive arm, see, can you smell it? Here is the swirl, see, landing on the Psycho. Will Maddie pop the ultimate? The answer is no for now, but looks like another play might oh. be on the horizon. Sure. That's gonna be the Moonlight Vigil miss. Devour gonna be used defensively, Upside but dive. there's the double root. There's the Swirl Seed, Lilting Lullaby still not used. They wanna get it onto Psycho. They finally caught him, but it's too late. Here comes the teleport from Robbie Bob, and Clacker oh. is soon to come. The Culling will finally take down Psycho, Stop but Strawfish is now in a bad position. Here comes Cozy with the Slicing Maelstrom. Will stun up everyone on Wildcard Black. Clacker is so low, will fall to Rovex. And now Robbie Bob is stuck in a 1v3 under his tower. The health bars are low for Supernova, but they are also low on Robbie Bob. The fight goes in favor of Supernova. They only lose Maddie and Strapis in the process. And with this dragon up 11 minutes in, could potentially have that on the table. But look at the top side there for Wildcard Black. Off of that play, they knew they were at the numbers disadvantage. And Clam just said, okay, I'm going to take two entire turrets up top lane. Wildcard Black end that with a 2,000 gold lead for themselves. Let's revise that statement, Grapes. They didn't just lose Maddie and Strompus. They lost Maddie, Strompus, and the entire top side of the map. They now have <laughs> zero control here. And one of the things to notice, first of all, not only is there more gold on inner turrets right now in the side lanes, but more importantly, by losing that inner turret at before 12 minutes, before the plates even drop, they've actually lost any access to the Nyx Herald. Their mid lane is also now diveable. That top side jungle is no longer Supernova's jungle. At best, that is neutral jungle. At worst, it's wildcard jungle. Yeah, and it looks like wildcard is controlling all levels of the jungle right now with Clam starting up this Infernal Dragon. It's been a while since we've seen a dragon take here in the Northwest Esports Series RMC. 12 minutes into the game, we get our first one here for Wildcard Black. Yeah, the team's really not necessarily prioritizing that. Yes, sir. has to be careful. Okay, mm. we'll just hop over the wall to safety. And for Wildcard, they've really picked up the pace. When we just looked, literally two minutes ago, gold was pretty much dead even. And for Supernova, this is a position they're very familiar with. They are yeah. <laughs> normally a late game scaling team, and they can continue to do that in this game. Papa Chow might be caught out here. Oh, but Ooh, also look at the... Uh, look at the a 1v1 down in the bot side. Strop is, has already used the calling and a flash away for the Q. Robbie Bob is Blood in a bit damage. of trouble. Dash forward. There he goes. Strop is with his second solo kill of the game onto the Graves. And in the mid lane, Papa Chow did fall, but not sure if Wildcard can do too much off of that. Uh, really, realistically, at this point in time, Strop should not be winning the 1v1. Yeah. He Graves is online. You have the Eclipse. Both of them actually running the Eclipse here with the shield with the extra pop of damage. The difference in that bot lane duel. Robbie Bob's collateral damage was not off cooldown, and he ate most of that call into the face. So, theoretically, that shouldn't happen the next time. But I say theoretically, Grapes, because this is the third or second or third time that Strompus has solo killed Robbie Bob right now. If there's anything that we should say about Supernova is to expect the unexpected. Strompus here doing so well, and look at Chow going aggressive here onto Psycho. Psycho does have the Halo Blade, so we'll have a nice Ooh. return, but there's the root from the Gravidum, and oh no, Next. Robex might be in a bit of trouble as well. Dash forward from Clam. But looks like the Solar Flare will be dodged away from, and Chow gonna go once and again with the Abyssal Dive. Not gonna find a target. Might try to lash Quacker. out onto Clam with the Tongue, but here comes Quacker. Has a Dominus looking for some damage. Slice Dice is in, Slice Dice is out, and now it's the turn in favor of Supernova. Lilting Lullaby only onto the Renekton will only get a Dark Harvest stack for himself. Maddie. He's looking for the plays, it's just not enough really for Supernova at the moment. It's it's great fun watching this Graves, but the biggest question in my head right now is just why? Uh -oh. Why are they fighting so hard? Stun comes uh -oh. through. 
They get the tower, but will they get anything else? Maddie's already so low. Slicing Maelstrom forward from Cozy. Quacker is dashing in. Has the Prowler's Claw. Will pick up one. Pick up two. Chow will make it three. The Blast Cone will save his life for a little bit. And the Abyssal Dive out. Can no! Chow get away? Can he get away? No, the Wolves! The Wolves! The Wolves! One more! Oh! It doesn't matter. Quacker picks it up. Maddie also dies on the other side. So, um, not sure if that trade was worth their RMC. It was a four for zero at the end of the day. That was my question, Scrape. Just why are you pushing so hard into the mid lane? There are no objectives on the map. And sure, you win that fight, but did you need to keep pushing? You were all low on health and you knew Quacker was nearby, waiting in the wings. Beautiful arrow from Psycho and suddenly Wildcard. One mistake, they punished a one and a half gold lead. Snowballs, we're now staring at a 4,000 gold lead right now. The only bright shining hope, Strompus. And Strompus is not at that fight. I don't. I think for Supernova, calm down a little bit, slow it down. If you don't have Strompus with you, maybe don't pick a fight. He is your five kill carry right here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he was the strongest member on the Supernova squad. Everyone else is level eight or nine at this point. Strompus sitting at level 12 is kind of your sole win condition at this point. And so going for that 4v4, Maddie. going for that aggressive play is not really what they were looking for. But Maddie could be looking for an aggressive play here onto Yasin. Cozy going to land the Shuriken, but Quacker is here as well. Dominus has been popped, but Yasin falls immediately. Quacker now on the run, but the Lilting Lullaby is still available for Maddie. Will land it with the Eep. Here comes Cozy. Big damage coming out from oh. Quacker. Can he turn this? One more auto, and Quacker just picks up another one. It's time to quack the deck, the ladies and gentlemen, because the wild card black top laner picks up a 2v1. What is this Renekton even? That's the second time he's pulled off a 1v2, and this time he had no health. Clam is breaking ankles. Oh no, but the teleport coming in, this could be bad. And who but Quacker to rejoin the fray? Robbie Ops here on the other side. Collateral damage oh. not just used, but look at the burst. Strompus. And Chao go down immediately, and Wildcard Black is just pummeling Supernova in all assets of the map. I mean, we said Wildcard Black, this is a team that focuses very heavily on individual mechanics, and it's showing right here. That 1v2 top, that had nothing to do with strategic, you know, macro play. Yasin got caught out. Let's just call it what it was. Yeah. And Yasin went down, but Quacker turns it bot side as well. Clam had no business surviving that, but he dodged everything, bought so much time for the TP to once more come in from Quacker. And we talk about Strompus being the carry for Supernova right now. Quacker is the same for Wildcard Black, except that the rest of his team is doing better as well. So right now, Wildcard Black are firmly in the driver's seat and they're looking. Enchanted Crystal Arrow, back up. They can look for another pick again. Oh, Foreman. Robex is running pretty far up, and I don't know if they know this, but Wildcard Black is way behind you guys. Here comes Quacker, and the sandwich the is about to be formed, and it's going to be Robex in the middle. Devour out from Chow will try to pick up the shield, but not going to matter when you got the Renekton in there to kill all of it. Picks oh, up one onto Robex, and another one goes down as Maddie falls. Thick skin will just be timed out eventually, <laughs> and then second kill of the fight goes over to Quacker, make it eight on the game. This croc is absolutely massive as the Rift Herald will also go over. That's not a croc, that's a dinosaur. That is a T-Rex in the top lane, even without the, the Dominus there. And I want to point out, Quacker probably could have burst through the shield and killed uh, Papa Chow anyways. Yeah, exactly. He just decided to be efficient there. Just just take a nice stroll, nice long walk along the river, along the beach there, and then finish Papa Chow after that. Harold does get picked up by Wildcard Black here, and we already said they're firmly in the driver's seat with Harold at 18 minutes here. They can potentially use it to either distract and get themselves yet another dragon, or use it to distract and get a Baron as well. The last Harold found two turrets in the top lane. Can they do it again here? Can they use it to find two more turrets? If they do, it's definitely going to be an inhibitor, pardon me, going down. Look at the item difference in the top lane RMC. Cozy just picked up his Hextech Rocket Belt. Quacker's at two and a half items, and he has just been an absolute monster in this matchup that Cozy picked himself into. Oh. So things are looking pretty good for him. And right now, Supernova are going to try to target out Quacker once again. Papa Chow goes in really aggressively in the 1v2. Nobody's there to follow up. I don't know if that play was really well thought out. We'll get away because of the thick skin, but it's just going to be Supernova looking for some sort of play in some lane. Strop is trying to get this tower. They almost take down Clam in the bot side, but Cozy will fall. Maybe if he had that rank 2 ultimate, it would have been enough. But now Maddie 
is trying to just save their base here. The Turrets. inhibitor is getting targeted here by the Rift Heralds. Will it get another charge off? Okay. The answer is not yet, but now we have fights on multiple fronts. Rovex and Chow are fighting off top, and looks like they're losing. Bye. Quacker with the Dominus will secure a kill. Strop is on the other side, takes down Robbie Bob. Maddie will get the second on the Clam. So at the end of the day, things are not too bad for Supernova. They keep their base alive, get some crucial shutdowns, and just try to funnel some more gold into Strompus. So many questions, and Psycho is still looking to take this mid lane turret. Maddie can't step up here. He has to be careful, and oh my goodness, just just so much going Wildcard's way. Oh man. They're Did looking. They they're going aggressive. Swirl Seed will miss. No ultimate available on either Cozy or Maddie, which means it will be pretty hard for them to try and burst down this Ash, who does have that Immortal Shield bow available. So instead, just going to be Psycho getting out with what he was Wait, able to pick up wave? there. And will the minions take the tower? That's the question. I mean, <laughs> yes! They gotta do something. They didn't clear it. No, oh, they let the tower <laughs> die. I mean, honestly, it's, it's not the worst decision. You kind of deny some of the local gold there for wildcard black. But at the end of the day, having a tower fall is, is never a good thing for Supernova. You just open up your base even more. But this way, Graves, we, we saw how much gold everybody has when the gold got toggled. They're up at 8,000, 9,000, probably 10,000 by this point. They don't <laughs> care about the local gold. They are up almost 8,000 gold oh, team-wide no. from the side of wildcard here right now. And I, I want to point out again, Harold got two charges off bot side. They didn't take the inhibitor, but it is an open inhib. Arrow just barely misses, and there it, it doesn't even matter. They, they're in position for Baron and Supernova have been losing every fight. With this much of a gold deficit, they can't even walk into the Baron pit and and meaningfully contest this whatsoever. Yeah, 21 minutes in, and that's not normally a time where you can think, oh, a team is really just capable of bursting down the Baron, but with the amount of members that are here on the side of Wildcard Black, anything is on the table for them. And with Quacker rotating here, pushing down that top lane wave, Wildcard just have priority in all lanes so far here on Summoner's Rift. And right on cue, there goes Clam and Quacker, two manning this Baron. Yeah, and, and for Supernova here, part of me says contest this because it's your last chance, but I'm looking at the item breakpoints. Andrew Foreman right now sitting on the Collector. Second item not even completed. And if the the Collector build, uh, sorry, the, the sorry to dirt, not Collector, but the Collector build isn't great for big team fights here. They came late and they're still going to force it? Yeah, I, I, it's just Wait. way too late here for Supernova. Strong gets burst down instantly. So does Matty. Well, I think Maelstrom will do a decent amount of damage, but it's nowhere near enough. Quacker is now godlike on oh the turn action. And the Pigalene Ace coming out from Wildcard Black is just... Too much for Supernova to handle. Robbie Bob will teleport down to the bot lane and Supernova get absolutely crushed in the pit. That was, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't even see some of the ultimates come down. The culling didn't even come through. Neither did the loading lullaby. And I, I, like I said, I want to see them try and contest the Baron. <laughs> Once the Baron's down, there's no yeah. reason to. Death timers aren't that long. It's only 23 minutes or 22 and a half minutes into the game right now, so... We don't see Wildcard closing it. They actually probably could have tried, but they were kind of low on mana on a couple of members. Uh, but they're definitely fully in control. Two inhibs down. There's really only one thing left for Wildcard to do, and that is just push that top lane. You've got supers pushing in mid. You've got supers pushing in bot. And for Supernova, you're just on wave clear duty. You don't get to even look at that third dragon spawning. A really impressive showing here for Wildcard Black. They were a team that missed out on the EGL Summer Showdown. Remember, the Supernova made top 8 in that bracket, and it just shows the kind of improvement that Wildcard have been able to make, and this is definitely going to be a formidable team going forward into the Unified Grand Prix with the showing that they have right now. And they're just trying to just get pick after pick. I mean, Strompus cannot oh, be standing Strompus. there on this wave. I mean, this is just going to be a disaster. <laughs> there oh, there's that collateral damage we kept talking about. <laughs> Goodbye, Strompus. Yeah, and with Chomp is down, uh, well, there's not much hope for the rest of Supernova. You just simply don't have the damage, and you should not really be stepping up unless you're 100% clumped together. Wildcard, I'm not even sure why they're walking this down mid necessarily, um, but they can't afford to. I mean, Chomp is dead. It's a 4v5, but. Cozy has just emerged from the base, has that rank 2 slicing maelstrom. Gonna try to make some sort of last ditch effort here at their base. But Wildcard Black is still five man strong. They're looking for this top lane That's inhibitor tower. Tower's already gone. Last inhibitor here for Supernova. Soon to follow, I believe. Smoke screen out from Rovex to make sure he can't do anything to try and contest this, this Wildcard squad. Oh my god! <laughs> Clam! What what was that? 
Uh, I... <laughs> that is domination, and uh, he's got to heal up. They've got to fight here. They have to fight here. Yeah, they, here they go. I mean, Strapis has respawned. The question is, is it enough? Now there's super minions pummeling in from all lanes. Supernova are going to have to make a play quickly or the game will end right Watch here, right down. now. Maddie is getting bursted out immediately before it's oh. a flash away from the collateral damage. Oh. Here comes the arrow going to land here onto Cozy. That slicing maelstrom will not be used. Lilting Lullaby will land onto two. Supernova is retreating to the fountain, but Wildcard doesn't care. It's not Wildcard safe! will not stop. And Wildcard are going to push for the Nexus. Fight on oh. the fountain for some good measure. Get another kill onto Maddie. Boost those KDAs. Rovix and Strapis are the only ones alive, and they'll be the last ones to watch their base get destroyed. 33 kills in 25 minutes for Wildcard Black as they go up 2-0 in this NorQuest Esports series. That was a systematic dismantling that we just saw in that particular series there. I mean, from the very get-go, Wildcard Gaming just accelerated the pace. And we, we said that Supernova, I mean, despite their drop having some early game pieces, that, as a team, it just feels like the mentality is still will scale up to late, and they never got the chance to. Wildcard Gaming found a small lead, and they just kept chipping away at it. First, you know, your lanes aren't safe anymore. First, they start topside. Topside's not safe. And then topside jungle's not safe. And then anything past the river's not safe. And next thing we know, we're at your fountain. Your fountain's not safe at the very end. <laughs> I think the only reason why we didn't see more people dropping at fountain was because the minions took the nexus too quickly. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, what I mean, Wildcard had the early game advantage and Supernova were probably okay with, you know, giving up a little bit here and there, you know, knowing that they have some of the scaling advantages. They have the Aphelios, they have the Lucian, they have the Lilia, but you can't give up that much. And at the end of the day, Wildcard was able to just really snowball, I think, through their top side at the end of the day. We saw that Renekton Nidalee combo in the last game not work out super well, but in this game, mm -hmm. definitely delivering. Yeah, for sure here. And th the nice thing is that it's Swiss, right? So it's not single elimination. One loss is not going to set Supernova too, too far behind. They're sitting at one and one, and they've got three more rounds. So they can definitely still make playoffs. Hell, I'd be surprised if they don't make playoffs here. More importantly to the other teams, though, I think, is paying attention to Wildcard Black. This is not the same team that didn't make it into the last tier two tournament. This is a team that took that time, that practice, and they are coming in hot right now. They are ready to make it. To, to push teams, and I can't wait to see them challenge teams like Zeus, like AoE, maybe even their sister team, Wildcard Red, to show them their improvement, and I hope we get to catch that on stream. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Like, I think a big philosophy that Wildcard had in the development of these two rosters is there's no A team or B team. These two teams were built for their own specific reasons, and mm -hmm. they're both created to win and in, in this case wildcard black had didn't have as much success as their sister team in the tier twos but looking incredibly strong here just goes to show the the great like staff and, and coaching that they have behind their backs and are allowing so much growth coming out from some of these young players yeah and no knock on supernova either i mean the fact that they have achieved what they have achieved up to this point uh, shows how good they are i think they just got caught a little bit flat-footed by the ferocity uh, in the early game here. And you might catch Supernova off guard once, but rarely do they get caught by the same mistake again. And I have no doubt that the team, that the coach, uh, they'll be preparing something. And to an extent, I am very uh, concerned for the next opponent here because uh, my experience with Supernova is that after mad. they lose, they tend to come back swinging. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's going to be a scary matchup for whoever runs into them. Reminder that they will be up against another one and one team. So they could mm -hmm. be up against a team that, you know, lost their first match and then won against maybe a weaker opponent. And having to face up against Supernova after that, definitely not going to be pretty. And we'll see what the matchups for our round three will be in just a bit with some of the games off stream still taking some time to finish up. But while we have some of the time, want to thank some of our sponsors here. First of all, Pepsi, um, that much appreciated sponsor sponsorship from us here. They are gratefully supporting the NorQuest Esports Series this weekend. Make sure to try that Pepsi Zero Sugar with great taste, no sugar. And also Memory Express, Canada's premier destination for computer products since 1996. Now with 14 stores across Canada, they're ready to serve you in store and online. Go to www.memoryexpress.com. With that, round three is just around the corner here at the NorQuest Esports Series. Me and RMC, we're gonna take a bit of a break and we'll see you right after.